America, Tom Hand here with Americana Corner. Today we're discussing the British retaking the Great Lakes. In August 1763, England's Board of Trade replaced General Geoffrey Amherst as Commander-in-Chief of North America with General Thomas Gage, who hoped to crush Pontiac's Rebellion the following summer. However, Sir William Johnson, the Superintendent of Indian Affairs, reminded them of the exorbitant cost in men and material required to forcefully subdue the tribes. As a result, they reluctantly gave permission to Sir William to first try and buy the peace with presents. In July 1764, Johnson did just that at Fort Niagara with Indians from across the region. Not surprisingly, with a formidable army on its way, many proud warriors were suddenly very contrite for their past atrocities and accepted Johnson's generous terms. But the remorseless Delaware and Shawnee scorned Johnson's offers, and Gage ordered Colonel John Bradstreet to proceed to Fort Detroit via Lake Erie, destroying all villages he encountered. Bradstreet arrogantly ignored these orders and granted the Delaware and Shawnee pleas for peace. As General Gage had predicted, while these chiefs were professing loyalty to Bradstreet, their warriors were already on bloody raids in Pennsylvania and Virginia. In any event, on August 26, 1764, Bradstreet and his flotilla hove into sight of the ramparts of Fort Detroit and the trial was finally over for the beleaguered garrison. For 15 long months, Major Henry Gladwin and his hardy band had held on at the far edge of the British Empire, enduring the longest Indian-led siege of a British or American force ever in North America. Other forts were soon reoccupied, and the Union Jack was again flying across the Great Lakes. Next week, we will discuss the conclusion of Pontiac's Rebellion. Until next time, may your love of country lead you.